Hey, I'm Brandon Lee, and this video is gonna be about how I create transitions with my Insta360 footage. So the camera that I'm gonna be getting the footage from here is the Insta360 ONE RS 1 inch 360 edition. And I'm just gonna use some clips from the recent video that I posted about my trip to Japan. So go ahead and check my channel, and there will also be a link to the description if you wanna see the final video. Uh, it's the Kyoto and Osaka travel video. So let's go ahead and get started, and I'm gonna start with the basics of how I do my reframing, and then work my way up to the simple transitions and then the slightly more complicated transitions. And I will be doing all of the transitions in DaVinci Resolve. I won't be using Insta360 Studio because DaVinci Resolve gives you a lot more control if you know how to use it. And I wanna give a quick thank you to Insta360 for sponsoring the video. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here we are in DaVinci Resolve, and this is our starting point. We've got a flat 360 clip on a 4K timeline, 4K 24P. So next, here's what I do in order to reframe. I add the effect by hitting Shift Space, KVR Reframe 360 Ultra. So this plugin is a third-party plugin. I've now added it after the media in, and you can see that Carta VR is now part of the node tree in Fusion. You can just follow the link in the description of this video to download this plugin. It's free, I think it's open source, and you just follow the instructions on the webpage for the plugin to learn how to install it. Okay, real quick, I'm gonna take you through the controls here. First, we've got field of view. That's pretty self-explanatory. You pull this to the right, it zooms in. You pull it to the left, zooms out, as far as you wanna go. I usually keep it set to 0.48 as my default. We've got our transforms, pitch, which is tilt, yaw, which is pan, and roll, which is roll. Then we've got image projection, which is basically the way that it maps a round image onto a flat screen. So you can either turn off rectilinear projection completely, which gives you the fisheye look, the classic 360 camera, super distorted look, if that's what you happen to like, or you can increase the rectilinear projection and it gradually becomes less distorted, at least has less fisheye distortion, but it still has edge distortion. It ends up becoming more of a stretched out look on the edges instead of a curved look. So pick your poison. I usually keep the rectilinear projection almost all the way up. I started at around 0.929, which gets rid of the worst of the fisheye distortion. The rest of these I don't mess with. There's one more control that you should know about. Go over to settings and go down to motion blur. So you can add motion blur to your camera moves by turning this on. That means that your pan, your tilt, your roll will have the appropriate amount of blur to it if you turn on the motion blur parameter. It will not add motion blur to the motion of your subject in the frame. So if you have a person in the shot and they happen to be like waving their hand or walking or whatever, it's not gonna add motion blur to that because it's not analyzing the actual subject. It's only adding motion blur to the motions created by the plugin, the pan, the tilt, and the roll. I usually crank up the quality to five or more, all the way up to 10, but five is about the minimum that I'll use. And my shutter angle, I usually drop that down a bit to 160 because it tends to create a bit too much blur otherwise. And the other two controls, I don't mess with. But I'm gonna turn off the motion blur right now because it does use some system resources and it makes it a little bit harder to play back in real time. Now to do my reframing, I just stretch over the spline view so it covers more of my screen and I start setting keyframes. So let's say I wanna start facing the train. I will just set a keyframe there. And then let's say at the end of the shot, I want to be looking to the right. It automatically creates a keyframe on the appropriate point in the timeline wherever I happen to be stopped when I make that keyframe. Now, I don't see any keyframes in my spline view yet. That's because they are just out of view. So I need to just click this button here, zoom to fit. And then I see my two keyframes. Going back to the beginning, this is what we get. Now that's all fine and lovely, but there is a little problem. Look at the start here. It just mechanically starts, right? And then it mechanically stops at the end. The beginning of this is not smooth. All right, so what do we do? Well, I select both of my keyframes and I hit Shift S. 
and now they're both smooth. And now if I want to adjust, you know, the particular smoothness or whatever, the ramp in, the ramp out, uh, all I have to do is drag around these parameters to whatever I want. And that is why I use this plugin instead of Insta360 Studio because I have smoothness controls that are much more granular and a lot more keyframe control. And then as a finishing touch, after I've gotten the reframing exactly the way I like it, I will turn on motion blur. So that's how I do my reframing. Let's go ahead and move on. First thing I'm gonna teach you is my roll transition. Let's take a look. Just a quick roll like that. I'm starting off with this one because it's a simpler transition. You don't have to do any masking. You don't have to use any of Resolve's effects. It's just a matter of reframing the shots the right way so that they blend together pretty smoothly. Let's take a look at the main timeline. We've got two clips that matter here, one and two. The first one rolls out, the second one rolls in. This lens flare is just a little aesthetic thing I added, so that doesn't really matter right now. Let's select the first clip and go into Fusion. Here's my Carta VR plugin, and I've animated just two parameters, yaw and roll. And what's most important to look at here is the shape of the curve that I've created. So I've created a curve that eases in. In other words, it starts off slow and then it speeds up toward the end. And at the very end, it starts going really fast. So the shape of it is what you really need to recreate in order to get the right feeling to your transition. So basically all you have to do is go to the end of the clip where you want to cut and animate those parameters. So now I'm going to roll it. Let's say I want it to roll that much at the end, something like that. And then I want my yaw. I want it to also pan that direction, sort of like that. Then I select all and shift S. It smooths everything out, but that's not actually what I want. I want it smooth at the beginning, but at the end, I want it to be a different shape. And there's no automatic preset that will get the exact shape of that curve perfect. You just have to kind of mess with it, which is what I did. So I just dragged this down, so then it becomes a ramp up at the end. And I played around with that. And same with the yaw parameter. Dragged the Bezier curve down, and I played around with it until it looked just right. So you can just kind of keep playing it back and see what feeling you get by adjusting the parameters over and over, making it a steeper drop off, making it uh, a little bit more subtle, whatever ends up feeling right to you. You just have to play with it. Now we go over to the next shot. This is the shot that it's rolling into and the parameters are basically reversed. The main thing we need to pay attention to here is the roll. So let's just look at that. So if I select this keyframe, you can see the curve there. It is quickly rolling back toward zero, toward level. Uh, and then at the end, it's kind of leveling out. So all I did was just manually mess around with these curves. Drag that one around until maybe it looks right. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then drag this one out or back or whatever until that looks right. Put them together and you get this. Next transition we're gonna learn here is how to do a seamless wipe transition. So let's watch the final shot. So that's actually two shots put together. One, wipe, two. Let's look at shot number one in Fusion. The only parameter that's animated here is my yaw, which is the pan. And I have it slowly starting to pan as the shot goes on, panning to the left. And then at the end, it speeds up and it ends past 180. It goes about 270 degrees to the left. So panning slowly and then quickly speeding up. Slow, quick. I just set a keyframe at the beginning, keyframe at the end, and manually tweaked these handles. The second shot has a pan applied with the opposite curve. So it starts off panning really fast and then it slows down. It's the same as the roll transition in the basic thinking. You know, the first shot starts panning or rolling or tilting slowly and then it speeds up at the end. The second shot starts really fast and then slows down at the end. 
So it completes the motion of the first shot. That's all that's going on here. Then we go back to our main timeline, and in between shot one and shot two, I have a transition effect, edge wipe. So this transition effect is just doing a traditional old school video wipe between the two shots. So if I remove the effect, it becomes a cut. You can see it's just a cut there. And if I put the effect back, it becomes a wipe. In order for this wipe to look correct, I had to set the correct angle and I had to feather the border. First thing is setting the angle. Here's how it looks without the feathering. I can adjust this to whatever I want. And if I flip it uh, around all the way, then the wipe starts going in the other direction actually. It starts going the wrong way. And that gets really confusing, but just make sure that your angle is set properly. And I just aligned my angle so that it sort of followed the most, I don't know, sort of followed some of the lines in the shot. It's hard to describe, but I just played around with the angle until it was the least, the least noticeable. And then I turned on the border. So if you increase your border like that, you get a big fat white line. That's not what we want. But if you click feather, it turns into a nice feathered edge. So now I have a feathered border on a carefully placed wipe line. And you can clearly see the wipe line when I play it back slowly. I mean, obviously, you know, you see it right there, but when played back at full speed, it kind of disappears. That's because the speed of the pan of clip one matched the speed of the pan of clip two and the duration of the wipe was appropriate. So the duration of the wipe was approximately matching the speed of the two clips. So this is just all parameters you have to play with. There's no like one setting that's gonna work for every clip because every clip is different. Just remember that you have to pan, tilt, or roll shot number one in a certain direction. And then you have to pan, tilt, or roll shot number two in the same direction, continuing it. And in between the two, you have to add an edge wipe transition. And it has to be set at the right angle. And you have to use a feather on the border to make it seamless. And that's how I do a wipe. Now let's learn how to do a masking transition. So here's the final clip. And here's the two shots in my timeline. So basically the way this works is I have cut a hole in my second shot. So if I turn off the first shot and just play the second one, you see there's a hole under that table. It's all black. And then I filled in the hole with the first shot. Turning the shot back on, you see that it fills that space. Turn it off and it's black. Any shot could go under shot number two. You could put anything there. See, I could drag this around and change how the transition aligns. That's basically how it works. So that's basically what I'm gonna teach here. Shot number one is just a normal shot that has been reframed. Nothing special going on here. Just a normal reframe shot. Shot number two is where all the magic happens. Here we are in Fusion, and in addition to my Carta VR plugin, I have also used the polygon effect. To create a polygon, all you have to do is go up here and click on polygon and drag it down into your timeline. And then you click and you create some points. And then you connect it to another clip and it cuts a hole. That's what Polygon does. So for this particular shot, I just roughly followed the shape of the underside of the table, sort of like that. Created that polygon and then connected it to cut the hole. And I animated my polygon with just regular old keyframes. So I stepped through the shot frame by frame and selected some polygon lines and animated them so that it continued to follow the shape of the table frame by painstaking frame, something like that. I'm not gonna do it perfectly here, but that's basically what I did. And then I just added a little bit of feather to it with soft edge and I just adjusted how soft I wanted the edge of the polygon to be. 
you usually have to add a little bit of softness to your mask in order to make it seamless. And if we go step by step, frame by frame, you see that it's just following the edge of the table. That's about it. And the final little piece of the trick here is that I faded out the first clip at the end. Like that, it fades out. So that's just, you know, fade out curve. You just drag from the edge of your clip and you create a fade out. So then as the second clip takes over, you see the first clip is getting darker down there. If I didn't do that fade out, it would have been a little bit too visible throughout the transition. And I didn't want you focusing on the first clip for the entire duration of the second clip. I wanted the first clip to sort of disappear. And that's why I faded it to black. So basically that's how I do my masking transitions. And finally, I'm gonna to talk to you about how I do a hyperlapse transition. So a hyperlapse is when you do time-lapse with a moving camera. And this hyperlapse transition here uses a very fast moving camera through a market, and then it spins and it turns into an overhead shot also in the market. And that's what I'm gonna teach you. So here we are in Fusion looking at clip number one. This is the really fast hyperlapse going through the market. And what I did was I just animated the roll parameter over the duration of the clip. You can see that it starts off rolling slowly, and then at the end, it rolls really fast. So if I play this back for you, the roll is gonna be going really slowly because you're watching the original footage at regular speed, and my keyframes are applied across the whole clip at regular speed. I don't do my retiming in Fusion. I do them in the Edit tab. So I have my roll just the way I like it, and now I'm back in the Edit tab, and if I hit Apple R, you can see the retiming that I've done on the clip. So it starts off at 922%, then 1842%, then 37, 81%. So basically it's getting faster in three different increments. And the way you set a, a retime is you just move the cursor to a certain point and you can click here and add a speed point. And then you can just drag this little thingy and it will change the speed at that point. And then if you right click on the clip, you can choose retime curve and you can see the exact curve of your retiming. So if you want to adjust how smooth the retiming is, you just adjust these curve handlebars. Now here's shot number two, frame by frame. It starts off zooming in really fast toward this guy and then it slows down and starts moving more at like a regular speed. This shot is not actually retimed at all. It's at 100% speed, it's at normal speed. I created the zooming effect and the zooming feeling here purely through reframing in Fusion. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Here's all my reframing keyframes in Fusion, but the only one that you really need to pay attention to here is the field of view. So I'm gonna turn off the other ones. Okay, so now we're just looking at the field of view. If you look over here in Carta VR, the field of view starts at negative 0.6, which is impossibly wide, but I have the field of view quickly narrow down to a more normal setting. And the second keyframe for the field of view is 0.94, so that it zooms all the way in on the crab legs that he's cooking. So we're starting with our field of view basically at infinity. And then as the shot goes on, I'm animating the field of view to zoom in and zoom in and zoom in until we are all the way zoomed in on those crab legs at the end. The final touch here is to add the eye iris video transition effect onto the clips. So this effect is just adding the shape of an eye that appears in the middle of the frame and then grows larger between the two shots, creating a transition. In order to sell this effect and make it seamless, I increased the border all the way up to 960, and I clicked Feather. Now it looks like this. Then I turn my motion blur, do my final render, and the shot comes out looking like this.
Okay, that's how I create my transitions with my Insta360 camera. Please click like, subscribe, and the notification bell to see more videos from me. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.